a beautiful song. What a song to come in on. What a song to come in on. I made it through another day's journey and I'm still here. God has kept us through another week and, and we're still here. Well, it's a happy Sabbath to everyone. We thank God that you have joined us again on this beautiful Sabbath summer like weather here in Louisville, Kentucky. I serve as the pastor of the magazine Street 70 Minutes Church. My name, of course, is Dr. George E. Thornton, Sr. I serve as senior pastor. And, and that song by the William Brothers, what a beautiful song. Uh, uh, we, we're still here after another week of journey, another day's journey, another week's journey. We're still here. We've been lied on, been talked about, and been abused, and all of that, but we, we're still kicking. Hey! We're still here. And so we want to welcome you all to this ministry and thank you for streaming in and, and for connecting to this ministry. Uh, we've been having a wonderful time here at the Magazine Street 70 Minutes Church. Oh, we're not in the physical building per se as of yet with all of you, but, but I, I just feel your spirit coming through the, the technology and, I, and, I, and I, I know many of you have been blessed by the messages in this series we have been conducting. Uh, uh, night scenes in the Bible. Oh, those have been some beautiful messages. And we come today in the fourth installment of the five-part series. And next week will be the final message for this series, Night Scenes in the Bible. Last week, we had a wonderful time in the Word of God talking about Jacob wrestling all night with that angel. And Jacob said to the angel, was none other than Christ himself, he says, I will not let you go, hey, until you bless me. And the angel, Jacob had such a grip on the angel because Jacob wanted to be forgiven of all of his past failures and mistakes and the trickery and the lies and the deceit. And, and the angel said, Jacob, I hear you, I hear you. I'm going to look beyond your faults. Hey, 
and see your needs. And, and, and he said, I'm going to change your name from Jacob, which represents your past sins. Hey, you can look at my past all you want, but I'm going to change your name from your past sin and give you a new name, which is synonymous to the victory that I'm going to give you. And I'm going to call your name Israel. You will no longer be called Jacob. You will be called Israel. And, and, and the Bible says that Jacob went down from that place where God at Jabbok River with a limp. But a limp was reminded that God had blessed him. And sometimes we, we concluded in the message last week, sometimes God has to break us, hey, before he can bless us. See, people want a breakthrough, but breakthrough means that somebody's got to be broken. Something's got to be broken. See, if you want a breakthrough, something's got to be broken. And so, so we learned last week, sometimes God has to break us in order to bless us. Oh, what a time we have with that. And then, of course, we talked about the other previous messages. Next week will be the final installment of this series, Night Scenes in the Bible. And next week, we'll really culminate and bring it all together. And the message will be entitled, Night Shift. And all of us have had experiences that has kept us up in the middle of the night. Night Shift. The God of our tight places. The Night Shift. And we're going to talk about that on next Sabbath as we close out. And of course, as you know, we're moving into what is called Memorial Day weekend and, and summer is beginning to jump off and people are getting ready to travel, etc. But brothers and sisters, let me remind you, it's still a pandemic out there. And you got to be safe, you got to be careful. And we just thank God for all of you being here today with us on this beautiful Sabbath. It's summer like weather here. We are in the 90s here in Louisville, Kentucky. I don't know what the weather's like where you are, but but baby, it's hot here today. But thank God that he can keep us in spite of the weather. I want to say before I move into our scripture for today, I want to acknowledge uh, a couple because this is a milestone. I don't do it for uh, every Sabbath or every time I come, but this is a milestone. When people have been married for 50 years, you ought to give them a shout out. Uh, and so I want to give a shout out to Vanessa and Cecil Goodwin. They will be celebrating, starting tomorrow, their 50th wedding anniversary. 50 years. 50 years they have, they have cleaved to one another. Where the Bible says, man, man and woman should cleave as one together. And so I want to give a shout out to Cecil and Vanessa. May God bless you as you celebrate 50 years of wedding, of being together, and we salute you today. And may God bless both of you in your continuing as you move on up the King's Highway. We were in the book of Genesis last week. We come back to the book of Genesis this week. And I'm going to call your attention to the book of Genesis, chapter 19. Now, you know the book of Genesis right at the beginning. The book of Genesis, chapter 19. And I want to read verses 1 through 11, and then 15 through 17, and then I want to read that single verse, verse 26. If you have your Bibles, whatever tablet, whatever instrument, whatever translation you're using, fine with me. You know, we always say the thing that we want to make sure you have is the Word of God. The Quran cannot do this for you. Uh, uh, some other book or tablet uh, 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 cannot, you have to have the word of God. And so we want to read chapter 19, verses 1 through 11, and verses 15 through 17, and verse 26. I, I'm going to take my time with this text, this passage, because of the import. If there was a message that we need to hear in these last days, it is this one today coming from this passage. And so let me slow drag this text. Let me take my time with it so that you can get the understanding as you read along with me. Genesis 19, 
and beginning with verse 1. Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, in the evening, and Lot was sitting at the gate of Sodom. And when Lot saw them, he rose to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Hear now, my lords, please turn into your servant's house and spend the night. Wash your feet, and then you may rise early and go on your way. And he said, and they said, no, but we will spend the night in the open square. But he, speaking of Lot, insisted strongly. So they turned into him and entered into his house. And then he made them feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. And now, before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both old and young, all the people from every quarter surrounded the house. And they called to Lot and said to him, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them carnally. So Lot went out to them through the doorway and shut the door behind him and said, Please, my brethren, do not do so wickedly. See, now I have two daughters who have not known man. Please let me bring them out to you, and you may do to them as you wish. Only do nothing to these men, since this is the reason they have come under the shadow of my roof. And they said, Stand back. This one came in to stay here, and he keeps acting like a judge. Now we would deal worse with you than with them. So they pressed hard against the, the man's lot and came near to break down the door. Have mercy. But the men who were in the house reached out their hands and pulled Lot into the house with them and shut the door. And verse 11 says, and they struck the men who were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they became weary trying to find the door. Have mercy, have mercy. I wanna read verse 15 through 17 now. When the morning dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry, saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. And while he lingered, while he lingered, the men took hold of his hand, his wife's hand, and the hands of his two daughters. And the Lord being merciful to him, and they brought him up out and set him outside of the city. And verse 17 says, So it came to pass, when they had brought them outside, he said, Escape for your life. Do not look behind, nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest you be destroyed. And then verse 26 says to us but his wife looked back behind him and she became a pillar of salt.
His wife looked back behind him and he, she became a pillar of salt. I want to speak on the subject entitled About Last Night. About Last Night. Let us bow our heads that we recognize that it's not by might nor by power, but oh, the, oh Lord, please by your spirit. Father, we stretch out our hands to thee. No other help we know. If thou wilt withdraw thyself from us, whether shall we go? I cannot preach this word that you have laid on my heart today. I cannot preach it unless you are with me, O oh God. And so I ask humbly now that you hide me behind the shadow of the cross, that Christ might be seen and uplifted. And give me holy boldness to declare the unadulterated word of God. And oh God, I will be careful to give you all of the praise all the honor and all of the glory because you're God all by yourself. Bind the devil right now because of the nature of this message. Let no weapon form or even try to develop that will hinder this word going out today. And then, oh God, in the solemnity of this message, may somebody at the end hear the word of the Lord and that they will give their hearts they will surrender their families and each other under the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ speak now speak through me and use me and I will be careful to give you all of the praise the honor and the glory ah, because you're God all by yourself Boy, I ask it now. Use the stammering tongue of mine. Lift up your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all of God's children said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Oh, I can't hear you, but I, I feel you saying Amen in your home today. The message fourth installment of this night scenes in the Bible and the message today is entitled About Last Night. Help me Holy Ghost. The idiom or expression about last night is used as an opening line to a conversation regarding the events of a previous evening, often involving an unpleasant, shameful, embarrassing topic, experience, or situation about last night. And I'm sure, as you are listening to me, I'm sure that all of us have had our about last night's moment and trying to explain some behavior, some misconduct, or some situation. Come on, say amen, somebody. Today, today, I want us to take a serious look at a memorable passage in the sacred scripture with deep reverence and godly fear as we talk about last night, encountering this gripping and suspenseful, shocking and sad story of the last night in Sodom, found in the word of God in the book of Genesis 19. What a night it must have been like in Sodom about last night. The evening was so mild and beautiful in the cloudless climb of the east. The sun had gone down 
behind the western hills. And the brief twilight lingered and the air was filled with perfume. The light clothed the landscape with dreary fascination. The evening air wooed voluptuous ease. The night persuaded the passion and pleasure about last night. The last night in Sodom, this was an unusual last night because it had eternal consequences weighing in the balance. Note the words, tarry all night, escape for thy life. These are the words of, of man and the words of angels. Brothers and sisters, I want you to look at the contrast of these words. The man Lot, a master of courtesy and hospitality. The angels, ministers of mercy and vengeance. The man Lot spoke of a house and home, feasting and rest. The angels spoke of pending wrath and swift destruction. The man Lot persuaded to the enjoyment enjoyment of quiet evening and a luxurious bed and breakfast sweet and, and promise the return of a beautiful day. But the angels would hasten and escape from the scene of enchantment and delight at the sacrifice of all earthly possession. The man Lot spoke from mere feelings and vivid impressions of things that were passing before his eyes. But the angels spoke of things they were and behind calm, peaceful aspect of the closing day. They saw the fiery tempest of the coming morning about last night. And only, hear me brothers and sisters, only if they had heeded the warnings about this last night in Solomon. Ah, but little did they know that this would be the last night that Sodom passed the boundaries of God's mercy. Have mercy. And because of their sinful pleasure, the vilest and the most brutal passion were so unrestrained, feasting and drunkenness, Solomon had passed the limits of divine forbearance, the hidden boundaries between God's patience and his wrath. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, as I talk about this last night, there's a cup of iniquity. Their cup of iniquity had reached to the brim. The storm of divine judgment was coming in the morning. And here we are taught a solemn lesson Get it? While God's mercy may bear along with us the sinner, you and me, there's a limit beyond which men and women may not go on in sin. And when that limit, hear me now, when that limit is reached, the offer of mercy are withdrawn and the ministration of judgment begins. Oh, about last night. I don't know about you, but as I look around, even though in this pandemic, even as we're coming out of the pandemic, God's mercy is being trifled with today. Even, not just in the world, but even in the church, infidelity prevails, and many of our churches, I'm not scared to say it in our land, oh, not infidelity, infidelity in the broadest sense, and open denial of the Bible, but infidelity that is robed in the garbs of Christianity, a hollow formalism, the Bible says in the last days, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. These are the last days. In fact, in fact Christ declared, when he spoke about it in Luke chapter 17, he says, as it was in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Lot, even thus shall it be in the days when the Son of Man is revealed. 
I don't know about you, but the world is fast becoming ripe for destruction. And soon the judgment of God are to be poured out and sin and sinners are to be consumed and will be no more. Oh, the reason why I want to talk about last night because it involves you and me. Look at the text. Look at the time. It was night in Sodom. The coolness of the evening time had fallen forth in the inhabitants of the city. The pleasure-seeking throngs were passing to and fro, intent upon the enjoyment of the hour, inflamed by the vilest passion. They were feeling mighty good. And in the twilight, two strangers, the text tells us, drew near to the city. But notice the atmosphere in, in verse 4 and 5. Notice the atmosphere. Now they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both old and young, all the people from every quarter surrounded the house. In other words, as the two men that Lot received as guests in his, in his home, they begin to lay down the rest to get some rest, but, but, but there was a knock on the door. All the men of Sodom came rushing on Lot's house and, and raises the question based on verse 4 and 5. Where are the men that came to stay with you tonight? Notice the language. Bring them out. Have mercy. Bring them out that we may know them. Oh, I, I don't want to go too deep in it. I don't know if children are listening, but, but you can help them with this. To be known in that context, it's the same word that in Genesis when the Bible says Adam and Eve knew each other. Bring them out so that we may know them. In other words, that we may have sex with them. And the imprints of verse 8. Lot goes out and tries to appeal to these men of Sodom. Both young and old have mercy. He goes out and says, brethren, you don't want to do this. You don't want to do this wickedness. I, I, I pray that you not go there. But I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you. And you can do to them as you see fit. I, I, I have difficulty explaining this, but it's the word of God. They didn't want women. They wanted the men. Talk about last night. They wanted the men. Are we not living in that time now? Are we not living in this age now where everything goes? Oh, I can't hear you, but somebody's quiet in your household. About last night, let me break it down. Many have used Genesis 19 to claim the true sin of Sodom, of sin of Sodom was homosexuality. But when you read passages of scriptures that mention Sodom and Gomorrah, their true sin was violence, hear these words, violence, arrogance, oppression, inhospitality. Certainly the men of Sodom were guilty of these sins and the word of God indicates it was so, along with homosexuality. Also the Sodomites were guilty of gang rape. They believed they wanted to gang rape without consent of the men. They wanted to gang rape them. Bring them out so that we may know them. And all of 
this, brothers and sisters, I don't care how you slice it or how you cut it, I don't care what side of the aisle you're on, all of this was in violation of what God had intended. Look at Ezekiel chapter 16 and verse 48 to 50. The Bible says, they were haughty and did abomination before me, so I removed them when I saw it. Are we not living in that time? When people just flash before God and do whatever they so big and bad enough to do without recognizing the judgment of God? This indicates that the abomination committed by Sodom led to their destruction. See, you can play with God all you want, but God can only take but so much. The iniquity of the people of Sodom was full to the last drop and added to the fiery cup of wrath to be poured out upon their heads. There is no point beyond which the divine forbearance you cannot go. Once you have reached your cup of iniquity and you don't know that, that's why you cannot trample upon the mercies of God. That's why we can't be presumptuous when it comes to God's grace and mercy. When grace and mercy is open to you and available, you better latch on to it because you never know when your cup or my cup of iniquity has reached its full, fullness with God. About last night, could it be? No, no, no. No, I'm using this in the question. Could it be that the reason for Solomon's destruction was because of same-sex behavior sexual immorality, perversion, unnatural desires. And sure, you can include fornication and adultery. All of it falls in the same category. And if the two, note, note, note the passage, if the two angels had not appeared in the city who were disguised as men to, um, to Solomon, had not pulled Lot back into the house, they would have torn Lot to pieces. Oh, here's what I'm trying to tell you. Evil wants what evil wants. And it will not stop. Hear this preacher. Evil will not stop until it gets what it wants. Notice that, that the angel, heavenly messes, had to put forth their hand and, and pull Lot back in the house because if they hadn't, they hadn't done that, then those men are old and young. Those, those men who wanted men, not women, but wanted men, would have torn Lot to pieces. And that's when Lot, <laughs> that's when Lot realized that the two men were no ordinary guests in his house. See, the men, watch this now, it's in the text. The men smoked. They smoked the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, the Bible said, in verse 11. And both small and great, so they wearied themselves to find the door. But, but, but notice the text. Here they are smoked with blindness. You would think, if I'm here with blindness, I want to figure out, how did I get blind? No, they're still trying to get inside the door. That's what the text says. They wearied themselves trying to find the door. <laughs> Hear me now. Even in blindness, they still pursued their wickedness in trying to find the door. Let me pause here. Some of us are blind with passion and sexual pleasure and wrongdoing. Regardless of the consequences, we still weary in finding the door to our, uh, our base pleasures. Evil runs rampant no matter what. About last night. See, the angels now revealed to Lot their mission. And, 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 and get this now. God never destroys a people or group without warning. 
These people have been warned. When you look at Genesis 17 and 18, Abraham is negotiating with God because God is going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, those five providences. God is going to destroy them. And Abraham says, if I find 50 righteous, will you spare the city? And God said, yes. And then Abraham knew about Sodom. He said, what about if I find 40? And he went on down to 40. He said, then what about 30? What about 35? And then he went all the way down, if I find five or 10, would you spare the city? So when we come from Genesis 18 to 19, we can conclude that they could not find 10 righteous people in that wicked city. And God was going to destroy it. We will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxed great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. I, I, I know, I know, I, I know, I know, I know this is not an easy message. I know you, you, you all are saying to me, preacher, don't you know we need hope? We, we're in a pandemic and, and this is uh, May, a uh, mental uh, awareness month and, 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 and you need to let people know some of the good things of the kingdom. I believe in all of that. But we also need to let people know that Jesus is coming soon. That this world is about to shut down and judgment is coming and it will begin at the house of God first. The strangers whom Lot had endeavored to protect now pr promised to protect him and all the members of his family who would flee with him from the wicked city the last night in Sodom. <sighs> Lot heard the warnings of the angel, the, their purpose for coming, and he goes out and to find his other children, his son-in-laws and daughters, to inform them of what the angel had told him and told them to get, get up out of there that the cities were going to be destroyed. Well, they laughed at their dad. They laughed at him. They mocked him. Look how beautiful Solomon is. Look how lovely things are. Are you kidding me, dad? In fact, you were out here with us early in the day. And why do you think God all of a sudden now is going to destroy Sodom? He would not do such a thing. And they laughed and they mocked him. And so when Lot went back, Lot was disappointed and with sorrow because his children would not receive the message. Some of his children hear me now. Some of his children, hear me parents, clung to Sodom and his wife refused to depart without them. We love our children we love our grandbabies. We love our great-grandbabies. But don't allow your children to cause you to be lost. I know that's a tough word, but it's right and it's tight. Don't allow your children, or your spouse for that matter, cause you to be lost. Nothing is more precious than heaven. Scripture says, as the angels told Lot to get your wife and your two daughters who are here, get you up out of here. And the Bible says, Lot delayed. Lot hesitated. When the house is on fire, you don't hesitate. You get out there as quickly as possible. But for the angels of God, if they had not snatched Lot, his wife, and his daughters by the hand, they would have all perished in the ruins of Sodom. 
the angels snatched them up by the hand and led them out of the city. The mercy of God. Oh, when I think about that, I'm not just talking to Lot. I'm talking to us today. What things have God snatched you from? What things did God have to pull you out from? I know the things he snatched me out of. I know the things he pulled me out of because they would have ruined my life. What things have God snatched you from? What dark places he pulled you out of? What situation he stepped in right on top? Come on, say amen, somebody. Don't lie to yourself. Be honest with me. Because if you had to stay in it, it would have caused your ruin. But God, through his mercy, snatched us just in the nick of time. Somebody say hallelujah. Who am I preaching to? About last night. Look at verse 17. Look at verse 17. Verse 17 makes it clear that this place was about to be in an entire inferno. Look, look what it says in verse 17 of, uh, of Genesis 19 and verse 17. Look what it says. So it came to pass when they had brought them outside that he said, escape for your life. Do not look behind, do not look back, nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest ye be destroyed. God is patient with us. Look at Lot. Even when the angels snatch them up and take them out, Lot still does not see the urgency of the matter. He negotiates with God to try to make adjustments. And what was the plan of God? Don't take me up to this high mountain. Don't take me up that high. Just put me in this little part of the mountain. You know, I, I don't want to, I'll leave Sodom, but I still want to be close enough so I can be connected. Oh, you somebody need to hear me. I, I don't need to go way out into the country. I still need to be in, in the suburbs so I can still be close to the city. Oh, somebody need to hear me. I, I don't need to go high up. See, God wants to take a higher, but we want to take a low aim. Can you just let me stay in this little part, uh, this little small area? It's called Zor. Can I just stay there? And God is so patient with us. Even he knows that the place is about to blow up with fire and brimstone. He says to Lot, I'm allow you to stay there, but you cannot look back. You cannot even think about Sodom. And Lot, because of his hesitancy, I'm going to read this. This comes for us dads and priests of our homes. I want you to hear this. If Lot himself had manifested no hesitancy to obey the angel's warning, but had earnestly fled toward the mountain without one word of pleading or remorse, his wife, his wife, his wife also would have made her escape. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 161. Watch this now. The influence of his example would have saved her from the sin that sealed her doom. Let me say that again. The influence of his example, the influence of the father in the home, the influence of the dad being the priest of the home, of his example would have saved her from the sin and, and sealed her doom. But his hesitancy and delay caused her to lightly regard the divine warning. While her body was upon the plain outside of Sodom, her heart clung to Sodom and she perished with it. You remember that old R&B song? Your body's here with me. But your mind 
is on the other side of town. She was outside of the city, but her heart was still in Sodom. And largely because Lot delayed. If he had not hesitated, if he had got up there swiftly out of there, he could have saved his wife from the ruin and destruction. And so we read these words in Luke chapter 17. And Jesus uses Lot's wife as a fearful warning for us today. As we are nearing the close of history, it says, remember Lot's wife. Brothers and sisters, when God is trying to move you forward, there's no point in looking back. When God says to you and me, keep a stepping, you better keep it moving. For I know the plans I have for you, declared the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and future. Jeremiah 29, 11. I'm going up the king's highway. I will not turn back. The past is the past. I'm looking forward by God's grace to where he's taking me. And that's why this appeal song this appeal song means so much to me by Mississippi Mass Choir. They sing this song, and it's a beautiful song, and I want you to hear it. The song says, your grace and your mercy has brought me through. I'm living this moment, hey, all because of you. Your grace and mercy has brought us through. And when you think about your life, when I think about my life, when you think about what he snatched you from, what he pulled you out from, what he pulled me out from, uh, when you think about it, when you look back across the chasm of the years, the people he cut you off from, when you think about all the people, that, your friends who have died, those who have, who have AIDS, those who have, those who have addictions and all that, and yet God spared you and pulled you out. Somebody say hallelujah. It's because of his grace. I want to thank him. And praise you too. I want to thank you and praise you too. Your grace Listen to this song. This song going to make you bow your head and say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Your grace and mercy. I'm living this moment. We are living this moment. Because not because of me, not because of my education, not because of who I know, but because of him. I want to thank you. I want to thank you, Lord. And praise you. I want to praise you for saving me and my family. Your grace. For delivering us from the things that could have destroyed us, could have ruined us. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for saving. Yeah. A sinner like me. Yes, Lord. Thank you. To, to tell the world. Tell the world. Yes, sir. Salvation is free. Yes, salvation is free. There were times, there were times I didn't do right. I just didn't do right. But guess what? Your grace. You watched over me. You watched 
over me and my family both day and night. Hallelujah, hallelujah. because of your grace and mercy. I'm living this moment all because of you. I'm living this moment. All because of you. Listen, listen, justice. Justice, justice demanded. Justice demanded that I should die. That we should die. Yeah. But grace and mercy said. But grace and mercy oh, said, oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's already paid He's the price. Hallelujah, He's hallelujah. Hi. You see, I, 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 I once was I know what I'm talking about. I know where he brought me from. I can see. I know what he snatched me out of. Grace and mercy. Your grace and mercy. Came along. Came along. Came along. Came along. And saved me. Woo. I'm getting happy up here. Brought me through. Did he bring it through? Did grace and mercy bring you through? Come on and testify with me. I'm living this moment. We are living this moment. Oh, I, 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 I want to thank you, Lord. I want to thank you, Lord. Jesus. I praise you, too. I want to thank you. You're great. You're great. You're great. Grace. Your grace and mercy has brought us. Oh yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh Father, thank you, thank you for your grace and your mercy. We're living this moment all because of you. We didn't always do right. And if we are honest with ourselves, we loved Sodom and Gomorrah. But your angels came along and snatched us up out of there. Pulled us and placed us on a higher plane. Even when we delayed and should have been thankful that we didn't burn up. Your grace and mercy brought us through. Father, you're coming soon. I, I, this is not a negative message. This is a message of hope. This is the warning about last night. Your last night doesn't have to be Sodom. Your last night can be weeping may endure for a night, but joy, joy come in the morning. Father, as people are listening to me right now in the solemnity of this hour, I want to appeal to the fathers. I want to appeal to the dads. Father's Day is coming up soon. Your influence on the home is significant. When you set the, the standard, when you set the stage, when you set the bar, you shall require of all of your family and your children and your wife to follow as, as Joshua said as for me and my house 
we shall serve the Lord. If Lot had not hesitated, if he had recognized the urgency of that, that call by the angels, get ye up out of here, escape for thy life. But it's because of his, his hesitancy that caused his wife to be lost because she was lingering. She clung to Sodom. What things, what things, what things are you still clinging to when you know for a fact God has brought you out of it and yet you're clinging to it? Oh, you may not be in it, but you're clinging to it. And God has called me to say to you today, let it go. Don't look back. I'm taking you to a new place. I got something better for you. You don't have to settle for Sodom and Gomorrah. You don't have to settle for second, third, and fourth. You are a child of the Most High God. And so I know, I know, I know there are some things you have to say goodbye to. There's some person you have to say goodbye to. There's some situation about last night that you have to give up. Father, we receive your grace and mercy. And I'm glad the cup of our iniquity has not filled to the brim yet because we can still hear the wooings of the Holy Spirit speaking to our hearts and to our minds. And so, Father, I lift before you this church. This church still clinging to stuff still trying to look back in hospitality arrogance violence these were the true sins of Sodom along with the sexual pleasures and other things not caring for other people thinking of owning themselves these were the sins true sins of Sodom. Father, spare us. Take us to a higher plane. Because as we put on the song that we've used every night in closing, you're about to come. The midnight cry is about to sound. And when you come, I don't want to be caught in Sodom and Gomorrah as it was in the days of Noah and the days of Lot. People eating and drinking and giving in marriage and, and drunkenness and, and doing everything that's imaginable to their hearts and mind. And they did not know that the Son of Man had be, been revealed. Help us to be ready. I've done what you've asked me today. I'm not trying to be a popular preacher. I'm just trying to be a right preacher. Right with the things of God to share with your people. So bless us now, Lord God. If we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us. And you are able to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And if you heard this message today, and you understand where this preacher was coming from, why don't you just hit like? Why don't you just say amen? Write a note, say amen, preacher. Thank you for this word, for this time, and for this last day. For we ask it all in the worthy name of Jesus. And for his sake we pray. Thank you for your grace and your mercy.
my beloved. It's on you now. You have to decide whether you want to stay in Sodom or whether you want to move to a higher plane. And Sodom can mean a lot of things. It means anything that keeps you from being where God wants you to be. It's your choice. His grace and mercy is still available. But the Bible says he's going to cut it short in righteousness and righteousness soon. I want to be found in that number when the saints go marching in. As we listen to Alvin Slaughter, I love this song. It speaks to my heart that all that I'm going through, all that I'm experiencing, all the setback and all the bickering and fussing and all the stuff that goes on in the church and outside the church. If I just hold on to God's unchanging hand, he's going to say to Jesus, go back and, and get my children. And I want him to snatch me up out of this old earth. Me and my family and my children, my wife, I want him to snatch us up and all those who would love his appearing because he is coming the signs are all around us there's a mighty rushing wind in the air of a mighty rushing wind he's coming and it's closer now listen 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 I can almost hear. I can almost hear the trumpet. Don't you hear the trumpet? Listen, 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 listen. As Gabriel sounds the call. Cause at the midnight cry. At the midnight cry. We'll be going. Soon we'll be going home. Oh, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, will. oh yes, we will. Ah. I look around me, mm. I can see the prophecies, prophecies fulfilling Solomon Gomorrah. Oh yes, I can. That's full. Signs of these old times. Signs of these old times. They're appearing. They are appearing oh, everywhere. Everywhere you look I is evil. Can hear the Father. Can't you hear? Can't you hear? Can't you hear the Father? Tell the son, to go. son time to go get my children. Ha! Get my ha! children For the midnight the cry. Midnight cry. If he doesn't come back, he's going to have to apologize to Solomon and Gomorrah. <laughs> I can see the prophecies fulfilling. It won't be long now. Signs of these old times. Signs of these old times. Uh, they're appearing everywhere. Oh, 
my son, go get my children from the four corners of the earth. Get my children. Yeah, yeah. Cause in the midnight cry, hallelujah. The bride of Christ shall arise. Church, get ready. Get ready, church. Get ready, church. Get ready and stay ready. The dead in Christ shall rise. First. To meet him in the air. And those of us that remain. I don't know about you. I'm going to be changed. I'm going to be saved. And a twinkling of an eyelash. I'm going to get out of this old earth. Thank you, Lord. 